All right, so here's what we got so far. So I'm going to save this out and then let's attach it to the arrow for a second. And I'm going to get rid of this animation thing that came from Maya. I don't need that. Also, please note that if you have an arrow, make sure you have it in the right axes. Here, for example, I don't have any negative scales here. Okay, and if you know how to modify freeze transformation back in Maya, modify freeze transformation will reset all transforms to zero. Okay. And then you're looking also the position. The position is going to change uh, relative to this world, not Maya world. So that's going to be different all the time. You can't keep those at zeros, obviously. And the scales are going to be different here than Maya, unless you use an absolute factor back through the both scales, which isn't really important in this fact. So make sure there is no negative scales on anything. And this should work fine. All right, let's hit play, find out how many misspellings or whatnot. There's one. I'm an artist, not a coder. There we go. Actually, I'm a coder, but I just suck at typing. All right, perfect. Okay, so what happens here? Well, um, nothing right now, because what have we not stated? Well, what's it supposed to look at, right? And look at, I now have a target. Now, to make this fair, what I really want to do is make an absolute object with good... Um, rotations, no rotations, no negative scaling, no nothing. So I'm going to make a cube in this case, and I'm going to take that cube and I'm going to put it directly over the squirrel. So there we go. So I'm going to put it directly over the squirrel, right about at head level, and make sure it's on Z. So I got no negatives whatsoever. They're ones, all good. And then I'm going to take this and get rid of the cube by removing the cube. Effectively making a very good transform node. And then I'm going to stick that transform node right over onto the player. Okay, so that, there's cube. And what I'm going to do is call this, uh, player orient. There we go. So now that's what this arrow should be looking at. It should be looking at a very nice oriented object, you know, especially if you're dealing with slurps and lerps and quantirions. Okay. So let's try this out. Okay. And also I want to maximize on play so you can get a full idea what's going on. All right. So here's what we have starting out. And you're like, huh, it's pointing in the wrong direction, but it is doing some rotations. So it's seeing something. Very good. Now, what I want it to do is only based upon one axis, though, however. So let's look at the code and see what's going on here. So what I'm going to have to do is write a couple new variables here. Uh, the new, this one right here, new rotation. What I want to do is lock out X. So I'm going to put X equal to 0, 0.0. And I want to lock out Y. So now it's only, it's forced to rotate in Z. Then see how the power of quantirions are 
I mean, really, I can go in here and lock certain attributes of a certain rotation on a certain object. Very cool stuff. Okay, let's see what happens now. Well, look at that. In a 2D space world, it, it's doing its job. But what happens here? If I look around at, at the object, when I go in back of the object, it doesn't know what to do. It only knows how to go from um, a certain factor up to a certain factor down. Okay? But what I want to do is have it rotate around. But here's, here's a trick to do that. So if I look at it, if I look at the code and I put a negative here, what's going to happen is the complete opposite. Now, if I get onto the other side of the player, it works just fine. Okay, so now what I have to do is devise some code that switches uh, the vector 3 from a positive to a negative. And I'm going to handle that in the next video.